All aboard! We're Mel and Don. We travel full time in a 40 foot bus with our cats Pizzicato and Mr. Sweetface. One thing I've been wanting to do forever is pan for gold. It's literally the size of Mella's head. We messed up. But you don't always get exactly what you want. However, I found Thanks. gold. Good on. In a place we didn't expect. Pitsy Kana, you wanna go for a walk too? Should we get your leash on? You wanna get this leash on you? Good girl. Dad, go. He's got a lot to say today. I don't exactly know where we're going, but uh, it's more like uh, the cat walks you if you have a cat on a leash. Well, hi, cute kitty. Hello. Hi, kitty, how are you doing? So we're staying in another SKP co-op. This one's called Park of the Sierras. Now we've shared another SKP park in great detail before in a video. We'll link that video up here if you wanna go see what these SKP co-ops are all about. Each park is a little bit different and unique, but like the other SKP parks, it offers all the facilities. You've got a clubhouse. They got a room with pool tables and darts. Showers, pickleball court. Laundry, dog park, all those good things. I love how these sites are all nestled between the trees. It's quite a different feel from the co-ops we've been to in the desert. Now there's two reasons why we're staying here. The first reason we're staying at this park is because it is extremely affordable. We're staying in the boondocking area and it is just $5 a night to camp here. Can you believe that? Just $5. <laughs> oh, are you being carried home, buddy? Did you have the best time? Until he had to get picked up to come home. Yeah, because he never wants to he go home. He didn't want to come home. It's too fun. Did you go exploring? He got on a rock, he sniffed a bunch of stuff and yeah, we had a fun day. <laughs> the second reason we're staying here is because the park is close to the Yosemite National Park. At just 22 miles from the south entrance to Yosemite via Wawona Road, Route 41. But aside from the National Park, there is lots to do in this cute little area and we have a day full of activities. We're gonna explore Oakhurst and uh, Gold Gore. <laughs> We're gonna explore Oakhurst and Coarse Gold. Why don't we do the gig? We're gonna take you with us on an adventure today. We're gonna explore uh, Coarse Gold and Oakhurst areas just outside the south gate of the National Park. First things first, we need some breakfast. The little town of Coarse Gold is just an eight minute drive up the road. This place looks adorable. It's supposed to be all like fresh local produce. I'm super excited about breakfast. I'm super hungry. Yeah, let's eat. really bizarre how Americans can put like fried chicken with waffles. It's like, waffles is like a dessert. How can you put fried chicken on it? Answer for me below in the comments. Are donuts for breakfast or for dessert? I think donuts for, are for all occasions. I have an eggs benedict here with some roasted tomato and bacon and a root 
Chocola. I always like to get poached eggs when I can because I'm not very good at cooking them myself. Oh yeah. Perfection. I'm gonna get a little bit of everything in the first bite. With a name like Coarse Gold, I'm sure you figured out that there's been some gold mining over here. Yeah, I think this is one of the areas that had a big boom, California Gold Rush. And one thing I've been wanting to do forever is pan for gold. I think that dream might come true here in the little village here of Coarse Gold. Mm -hmm. Established as a gold mining camp in the 1850s, the town saw rapid growth as over 10,000 prospectors moved here seeking fortune. Today, Coarse Gold is home to just 4,000 locals and is a popular destination for tourists with its scenic surroundings and outdoor recreational opportunities. This place is adorable. So many cute little knick-knacky stores. All old-timey looking. The Coarse Gold Historic Village is now a popular place for locals and tourists alike. with art galleries and antique specialty stores. Oh, these are so cute! And a picnic area where families gather for weekend brunch. We were promised some panning for gold here, but it doesn't look like there's much going on. <laughs> Sorry, Don, no panning for gold, but you can get a cowgirl girlfriend here if you want. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of frightening. Do you want a teepee, Don? Should we get a teepee? Definitely. Maybe tiny home? TP Tiny Home. It'll be our next big adventure, guys. <laughs> I'm sure that won't take three years. <laughs> My favorite friend is here and he wants to dance. Let's go dance. I love that guy so much. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it is it is a warm day, so this is a little hot. <laughs> what do you think about this canoe? Do you think we could uh, strap this to the top of the jeep? We could. I, I don't want to. <laughs> well, this little historic village is very cute, but I'm pretty bummed about there being no gold panning. We're gonna have to go find it because Don's been carrying on about gold panning for a while now. They gotta do it somewhere here, right? Somewhere. I mean, we could just go in the creek. Yeah, just dig with our hands. See if we can find some <laughs> equipment. I can't believe that you can come to Coarse Gold and there's no way to go gold panning. There has to be. And just about another 10 minute drive up the road is Oakhurst. In case you're gonna get lost in this small town, they have an entire map. Here we are, that's us right now, and we're gonna go explore Oakhurst. Where better to go and ask if there's any gold panning than the visitor center? So the visitor center basically told us that uh, they don't know if there's gonna be gold panning, but if there is, it might be up at the Sugar Pine Railroad steam train facility. Um, we're not gonna drive all the way up there today, unfortunately, so. No? Do you want to? I mean, why not? Should we call them first? 
Who knows, maybe you guys will get to see us strike it rich in this <laughs> video. Hi, yeah, I was just calling. Do you guys have your gold panning uh, set up today? Thank you, Janelle. They have gold panning today. Yeah! Let's go. I tell you what, it is a windy road to go up towards Yosemite, but it is gorgeous. How do you like the drive? I'm getting used to it. We've done it like five times this week. <laughs> The scariest part of the road for me right here feels like you're gonna fall over the edge. Now I think we're just under 4,000 feet and this to me is like one of my happy spots. I love being at this elevation. I think we may have found it. We found the gold panning. Now you might be panning with some kids. They call me Mr. McNugget and it's not about chicken. The next few minutes was a crash course on gold panning. The real gold looks like that. And I can feel my gold fever starting to rise. In these mountains there are rocks that have gold hiding inside of them. The gold is heavy and it's going downstream like that. Is that gold, is it gonna to go to the top of the sand or is it gonna get buried if it's heavy? By the way, you're getting the kids lesson. That's fun. way more fun though. <laughs> <laughs> I dig at the river and I put stuff in a pan like this. And then I do the same thing the river does. I mix it up. When I'm doing this down by the river, every single time I get the same song stuck in my head. You know what it is? Taylor Swift, shake it off. <laughs> but look what happens if I dug in the right spot. Look down here at the bottom. Look what happens. See the gold pieces? Gold. That's where we find them, okay? Are you excited? I am. We're doing a real gold panning adventure. And they like to shake them around and see if something's hiding in there. I'm not worried about you doing that. You know why? It's always the adults who can't be patient. <laughs> First thing we gotta do, just gotta get some water. So dip it down, get some water, and come back up. Go ahead. I'm gonna give it a good shake. And we're gonna do something totally different. So look over here. You're gonna hold it with one hand. Look up at me now. Look, can you follow an important rule for me? No, Can you follow any yeah. part of the rule? The rule is we don't listen to moms and dads. Can you do that? Are you good at that? Yeah. Now all we're gonna do is we're gonna get the water to wash things out. Just a few more shakes of my gold pan, and as luck would have it, I found gold on my first prospecting adventure. Do you know what the laws in California say about finding gold, anybody? It's all about finders keepers. Do you want to take your gold home? No! <laughs> it's worth money. Let's take it home. Come on over here. I want you to bring that one over with some water. Are you going to take this home? Absolutely. <laughs> I found Thanks. gold. Good on. Found some gold. Mission accomplished. I thought it was going to be one of those things where you like pan for gold and you don't find anything. That's what you I just search and search and search. I know Look, at find real Look at gold. that. It's amazing. <laughs> After striking it rich, I figured I'd ask Mr. McNugget more details on what being a real prospector was like. I've been doing it since I was 12 years old, okay. which is oh, at least eight or nine years. <laughs> What's your, what is your biggest uh, find in a day? Okay, before I answer that, I have to ask, do you, have you worked for the IRS? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> okay. Biggest piece I ever found was almost the size of my thumb back in 88. With about the amount of gold that I just saw in my pan. That was probably about 4 or $5. That bottle, if it were full, would be worth about $1,000. How much do you get a day? It's totally random. Where are you from? Originally from Los Angeles, but we just traveled this time. Because I was going to say in LA that Malibu Creek, Topanga Canyon, Azusa that's Canyon, all have gold in them. Really? That's where you live. All of, them have, all of them have gold in them. What? We yeah. should have been panning for gold the whole okay. time we were there. So, no. As Mella might have told okay, you guys, I'm someone who takes on a lot of hobbies. 
sometimes yeah, way too many. Wait right there. But there's something real about gold panning that I feel like could be a great hobby. It combines a lot of things that I love. I love being out in nature. I love having those quiet moments. I love rivers and mountains. What do you guys think? And you love money? <laughs> <laughs> and I like the I like the ability at the end of the day to potentially make some money at a hobby. First off, it's better than gambling in a casino, honey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Chelsea. Comment below if you think Mela should Ash let me start doing some gold panning. Or maybe it should be a family gold panning adventure. No, I might leave you out there to do it alone. Really? Well, I think I'd get bored after like 10 minutes. I'd be like, didn't find anything, gotta go. Okay. <laughs> Let's look around the Sugar Pine. Yeah. What's this called? The Sugar Pine Railroad? The Mexican, the Mexican train. Yeah. Do you like it's trains? not called. Do you like trains? <laughs> when we got here, there was like a brochure with things to do. And there was an ad for the train next to a Mexican restaurant. So in my head, I had put those two together and I keep calling it the Mexican train. Every time we drive into the park, I go, there's the Mexican train. Do you like trains? <laughs> 10 years ago, we were planning a trip up through Colorado uh, and I was looking at things to do. And I saw this beautiful uh, railroad that goes from Silverton down to Durango. Uh, I was looking online at things to do and I saw that and I said, Mella, Hey, do you like trains? And she just started cracking up. Just sounded like a very kid thing to say. Do you like trains? Do you like trains? <laughs> <laughs> I got a big kid here. <laughs> All aboard, Mexican train. Leaving in 15 minutes. Take your seats, everybody. Uh, do you think we go all the way down to Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> What do you say, Don? Is it time for next event? Sure, let's do it. Time to head back down the hill. By the way, Yosemite is absolutely gorgeous right now. The waterfalls are stunning. If you get the opportunity to go to Yosemite before it all dries up in the summer, do it. And if you can't, we got some video on Instagram. Go check out the Instagram reels because that we can make. All that gold panning got me worked up an appetite. One of the things in Oakhurst that I was excited to try is a barbecue place called Smokehouse 41. take this home so we can go check on those kitties, make sure they're doing okay in the bus. Holy crap, that's ginormous. I've never seen a sweet potato that size. I didn't know you could get them that big. The Baker 41? The big, the uh, yeah, all well, the 41 baker. That's what this is called. I don't know what the 41's about. It's how many pounds you put on after you've eaten it. <laughs> how much do you think that thing weighs? Well, I know how much Mr. Sweet Face weighs. He's like 15 pounds, so let's compare. Buddy, can I pick you up? Can I pick you up? <laughs> I mean, it's not a huge difference. <laughs> How is that possible? God, it's gotta be at least 10 pounds. <laughs> it's crazy. The Bakehouse 41 comes with green onions. The Bakehouse. <laughs> the Baker 41? Why do I keep calling it Bakehouse? Might have to go for a run afterwards, I don't know. Or nap after. Or fall over. Yeah. I don't even know where to start. Mmm. That is tasty though. It's literally the size of Mella's head. They were like, do you want extra meat because you're sharing it? I'm like, hell no, this is plenty food. I'm gonna go into a carb coma in a minute, I think. We tried our best. I am stuffed. We could turn this potato into something else. 
Oh, we can make a shepherd's pie. We're gonna go have a little carb now. We couldn't nap for too long though because we still had one more thing on our itinerary for the day. We were headed to Bass Lake, just 14 miles northeast of Corsgold. We messed up. We just arrived at Bass Lake and as we were pulling in, we saw signs saying that this is part of the Sierra National Forest and we can't film in national forests or parks. Without permits. Without permits. So once again, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. We might get out and go for a walk, but we can't show you and it's really frustrating. We just didn't realize this was part of the national forest. So. We decided to come back to the park and our friends that we've met here, Bill and Nettie, have offered for us to borrow their golf cart so we can go along one of the trails in the park. And I can't tell you what to do. Go across, drop her off, and then back up, and then just... <laughs> but you will, get, you will get wet with these tires. Right. It doesn't matter if it gets wet inside, so don't worry about it. Okay. okay. That's Bill and Nettie and they saw our video that we made about the saguaro skp co-op in benson arizona and they messaged us straight away and said you have to come to our park as soon as we arrived don bumped into them like uh, the second we yeah arrived. like we just had arrived so we've got this map of the park we need to make our way to the creek place is a bit of a maze. But that's part of the charm of this park, as the sites are terraced with plenty of trees with a great feeling of privacy. Oh, hey bunnies. Hey bunnies. Is this your hangout? Like this house? So at some point we need to go right. Totally missed our turn. They said there's pumas and bobcats out here. That would be pretty fun to see, actually. Wait, oh, what? What? Wait, <laughs> Ow, tailbone. Here, walk up to the rock. Sure. It's really nice and peaceful out here. Oh, the things we want to do, we can't take you along. Yeah, we didn't realize until we got out there at the lake that it was all on national forests, which kind of sucks. We wanted to rent a boat. We wanted to take a paddleboard down to the lake. We wanted to do some hikes in. We thought this was great. We could bring you with until we got there and realized it was a national forest. Trying to plan this whole trip across California, uh, there were a lot of obstacles. We shared a couple weeks ago about how we were having trouble finding places to yeah, when camp. It, when we first arrived in California, we were like, oh gosh, there's not a lot of options. There's two types of people. There's the type of people that run up against an obstacle like that and give up and go, well, I gotta leave California. Just give up. It's too expensive. It's not gonna work. And then there's the other type of person that sees an obstacle as a challenge. And it's just something you have to figure out. And we are figuring out how to travel in California. And we're figuring out how to travel in California affordably, mm -hmm. which was a huge obstacle. 
it just means that there's some more searching and plans might have to shift a little bit and find the more affordable places. I feel like if we had been the type of people that just gave up, we would never have made it through our bus bolt, like at all, ever. We would have never gotten a bus. <laughs> Going through that whole process of getting the bus built to get on the road, I feel like we're more resourceful than we've ever been. Definitely, for sure. And so today when we ran into that little roadblock where we wanted to go do something at Bass Lake and we couldn't, and it's frustrating. I mean, we still can, it just means we can't take you along with it and we have to find another day to do that when we're not hanging out with you guys. <laughs> This is beautiful. This was what we came up with. We were like, Nettie and Bill keep telling us we should come back here. Yeah, it's 40 acres of gorgeous, undisturbed, wild California foothills here. And you got, you got to do some off-roading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did say, do something that scares you every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, now that we finally hit our stride in our actual bus life adventures, like we're comfortable getting around, we're comfortable finding places, we're flexible getting through and dealing with obstacles. It's important to kind of remember a thing a famous philosopher said, that life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you just might miss out. This is a really beautiful time of day to be on this trail back here. The lighting right now is just gorgeous. You probably know. <laughs> well, it is definitely Bunny Central back here. <laughs> This week, we found real gold. I found gold. There's gold in the hearts of the people we've gotten to spend time with. Almost every time we run into uh, Nettie and Bill here, they feed us. There's a treasure in the beautiful vistas and fresh mountain air. It's okay, dude, I'm not gonna hurt you. And although we'll continue to face obstacles, we've struck it rich, making our dream a reality. Operator, I'd like to make a call. No, I'm talking to the camera. Oh. I'm out walking Mrs. Sweetface. There's the physical joint. <laughs> it was a big head, bud. <laughs> All right, your turn. <laughs> 